Welcome or welcome back to the Alpha Omega Biz Dev Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. John Lee with Alpha Omega Consulting. And on today's episode, we're going to tackle the debate to x-ray or not to x-ray. This is a very common topic when it comes to chiropractors who I specifically coach uh, for business development and business growth. But this also can apply to probably other healthcare professionals as well. But specifically chiropractors, we have this long debate going on on whether new patients should be x-rayed or not be x-rayed. And this starts even from our chiropractic college schooling days and carries on through our actual professional real life careers. So I would say that probably about half of our profession does take x-rays and requires that for delivering care. And half of our profession does not require that. And I do have a stance and a feeling about this topic, which I'm going to get into in just a sec. Um, but it is, is, this is a very important debate, uh, a very important thing to really get clear with uh, yourself as a chiropractor if you are going to uh, really you know, take care of a lot of people in your community. So let's first, uh, first and foremost, let's talk about x-rays and what are the clinical advantages of taking x-rays. Now, when you are a chiropractor, yes, obviously a lot of what we do is by hand and feel. You know, we get very good, very skilled at palpation, feeling the spine, feeling the body, you know, uh, you know pressing into certain areas, feeling misaligned areas of the spine, which we call subluxations. And our hands and our sense of touch is probably one of our greatest tools. That then allows us to figure out and determine, diagnose which areas are having problems and how we're going to specifically manually um, or with instruments adjust those areas to correct the, the problems in someone's spine. Okay? Now, the chiropractors that do not take x-rays, and again, I think it's about half out there. And you know, there are some very popular chiropractic franchises that their whole business model is without x-rays, right? So can chiropractic be done without x-rays? Yes, absolutely. It can, okay? Um, because ultimately what you need is your hands to deliver chiropractic adjustments and give patients uh, the solutions they need and, and relieve patients of their problems and their pains. Now, can we do an even better job with x-rays? I wholeheartedly believe we can. And when you can combine your sense of touch and what you're feeling, right? Because uh, I do get a ton of information when I see patients and I palpate and feel their spine. But now if you can actually visually confirm on x-ray imaging and is objective, very clear, um, now you've got, in my opinion, a full picture, a whole picture. What your hands are telling you and what your sense is telling you and also visually what the image is are telling you. And if you combine that, now the level of clinical expertise just goes up so much more than if we just rely on palpation and our, our hand skills alone. So you probably guessed it. I am one of those who believe that we should take x-rays with all new patients. Yes, there are some exceptions. In my practice um, and probably the most chiropractors, we're not we're never going to take x-rays if we have a, a pregnant female, okay? Because you cannot do that with a growing baby. And also with uh, very young um, children, I don't take x-rays. Typically, if they're minors, um, 12 or under, and they're prepubescent, I typically can figure out a lot just by, pal by uh, palpation. However, if a minor, and I've on small percentage of time, if they have a lot of problems, just you know, a lot of issues, a lot of discomfort and pain, a lot of spinal problems, um, and I do believe that would warrant needing to visually see with x-rays. I will x-ray minors as well when, when needed. Um, babies, I've never needed to x-ray. Um, but for adults, um, in, in, you know, young, young teenagers, you know, kind of puberty age and on, when they're growing really fast, definitely x-rays have a high clinical value to how I can deliver my care and be so accurate. So a, a real good analogy to take is, Dental care. Do dentists take x-rays? Yes, probably vast majority. Yes, I've heard of maybe a small percentage that they don't, but 
Um, I personally don't, don't know of any. I know that probably almost all dentists take x-rays and they take x-rays of the whole mouth, of all the teeth. And I know my dentist, we do an annual x-ray just to get an updated view about my dental health. Um, we're not going to get into how often you should take spinal x-rays for, for chiropractic, but just to answer the first question, should we? Yes, we absolutely sh should. And there's uh, a whole clinical aspect to that. You get so much more clinical, inf clinical information when you take x-rays before you start adjusting patients and to really determine what the approach will be for that patient's care for the next several months to correct their problem. Now we also have to think about the um, few percentages of time when clinically there are indications to not adjust a patient either in a certain area or altogether. And so I remember I've had a case in the past where a patient, I took x-rays, and I saw that their C1, C2, the alignment was definitely off. So I actually did a flexion extension view to see if there was any instability. And sure enough, there was instability. And you could actually see that the, you know, for chiropractors, you understand this, but the, uh, the dens of C2, there was a clear light line and break in there. And, so, and there was a previous trauma for this uh, lady. She was an adult when I, when I met her. So chose not to do any adjustments told her the potential uh, seriousness of that C1, C2 instability. I recommend that she go seek a neurosurgeon uh, for consultation right away, and she did. And they ended up actually doing surgery to stabilize the area, and she was actually very thankful. She contacted me several months down the road and just thanked me for the diagnosis that the doctor said that this could ve very well have been a uh, tra you know, um, tragic um, accident waiting to happen, uh, you know, potential paralysis if she had a whiplash of some sort or some kind of fall or trauma to her, her neck area. So yes, that's rare, but it's x-rays that really help me to not cause any type of serious injury to this patient by adjusting an area that should, I should not have been adjusting. And uh, on a few occasions, unfortunately, we've also had some cases where there was a, an active cancer going on. You could see it on the x-rays, either a spine bone cancer or some soft tissue anatomy did not look right and you know usually we'll send those kinds of cases those images to what we call a DAC bar um, an expert in x-rays and imaging uh, in chiropractic and they would confirm that there was an active cancer going on and in that case then an oncologist definitely is more important than a chiropractor to really see what needs to be done to you know uh, address and treat the cancer so we've had again a handful of those cases and had we not taken x-rays, we would have just been adjusting those areas. And you, you obviously don't, don't want to do that, especially if there's a bone cancer going on. You could fracture and break the area. You could spread the cancer. and It could just be very, very, you know, um, you could just really worsen the, the whole situation. And all can be prevented by taking x-rays. Uh, you also have some cases where you'll have a patient who has a very severe osteoporosis. And when I see that, then I know my approach needs to be different. It needs to be a lot lighter with manual adjusting, very light manual adjusting, and sometimes you just have to use instrument adjusting, uh, like we use an activator on some cases, we'll also use drop adjustment instead of a traditional manual, you know, um, high velocity, low amplitude, thrusting type of carpet adjustment. And all determined by the x-rays, okay? So, uh, and I know that there's chiropractors that do fracture and, and break bones, right? Even when they're too forceful. But that can be prevented by having the right x-rays. Okay. So in my opinion, again, in my experience, and this is 22 plus years of being a chiropractor, um, I really firmly believe that our chiropractic profession, and again, if this is you that don't doesn't take x-rays, please do not take any offense, but does just really, you know, just... Uh, I guess, take what I'm saying and, and really think about if this can apply to your practice. I really believe we can clinically be so much better as chiropractors when we have x-rays to combine with our palpation skills. And then from a liability legal standpoint, you're really protecting yourself as a chiropractic business owner when you take x-rays because you, um, you just never know, right? Yes, it's a small percentage where it's going to be contraindicated to adjust certain areas or the spine altogether. But those, it only takes one or two bad cases that can really, um, you know, cause some, some problems to you, you and your career and your reputation, okay? 
Uh, one last thing, <clears throat> one last thing I want to touch on is: should you take X-rays of the whole spine, full spine? Because that's also something that's different from chiropractor to chiropractor. Uh, some chiropractors are very, very, you know, adamant, and they believe the whole spine should be X-rayed. And some believe that only regional views or certain sections of the person's area of chief complaint or pain should be X-rayed. So again, let's go back to the dental analogy. Does your dentist take X-rays of your whole mouth, all your teeth? Absolutely. They usually don't take X-rays of just one section. And they just don't want to miss anything. They, they want to be thorough. So in my office, we do take full spine views. Uh, so not meaning the old traditional full spine um, X-ray film views. If, if you're old school like me and uh, used to do full spine actual radiograph films, like they were like... <laughs> I forgot 14 by 72 super long films. I don't mean I don't mean that. Um, we nowadays with digital X-rays we just take you know, you know sectionals. We do seven views, um, whether it's a cervical or upper thoracic shift complaint or a lumbar pelvic shift complaint. We take seven views. We want to see uh, all the areas of the spine, and the reason why is a patient could be coming to me for a low back issue. <clears throat> By taking x-rays of their cervical spine and thoracic as well, uh, because if I'm going to adjust those areas, right, because most chiropractors, we do adjustments for the whole spine. We don't just adjust one area. We like to adjust full spine. And most patients like to get adjusted full spine. So if I'm going to adjust the area, I got to see it. I need to see what it looks like in the x-rays. I need to see exactly how the subluxations are oriented. I do Gonstead listing. I do diversify mostly adjusting. But my analysis um, is by a Gonstead listing approach. And this is because this is how I was trained early on as an associate and just kind of stuck with me. But the specificity of listings from x-rays would tell me how I should adjust that patient um, over the next several months to really fix those problems of theirs. And also, you pick up on so many things by x-rays where even if they don't have pain, it's the x-rays that can give you information that you can share with the patient and give them advice. Uh, for example, when you take a lateral cervical of patients, I would say literally 98% of the cases don't have a normal cervical curve or, or lower doses. It is extremely rare. It seems like it's literally 1% to 2% of new patients, their lateral cervical is normal. The other 98% is always a loss of lordosis, a straightening, sometimes a reverse curve. Um, forward head posture is so, so prevalent in today's day and age with technologies and smartphones and laptops and gadgets. And so when you can see that, and then now you can show it to a patient, and now you can actually teach them home exercises for neck and curve posture correction. Um, you can give them certain types of you know home, home use tools to curve, to, to correct the curve. You can get into workstation or ergonomic training and you know cell phone handling um, guidance so that they continue to restore the normal curve of their neck. Now you're really helping that patient beyond, say, if it was just a low back problem that they came in for. And that really is what dentists do for us. They did tell us exactly our whole dental health. Okay, um, I would say even say medical, medical doctors, right? They have a, a whole body medical approach as, as well by doing blood tests and things like that. So chiropractors, we should have a whole spine approach, right? We should be able to address their whole spine, not just the area where they're having pain or symptoms. Uh, same thing with, say, if you have a patient who comes in with a neck or upper back complaint, if you only took x-rays there and you never took a low back, lumbar or pelvic A to P and lateral, you would miss a lot. A high percentage of new, new patients that come in they have an L5-S1 disc degeneration, either phase one, which is mild, or it's more moderate to severe, phase two or phase three. They may not even be having pain, but if you can identify that, and now you can share that with the patient, that's a lot like a dentist saying, hey, you've got a cavity, right? We should definitely do something about this so it doesn't spread and get worse and get into your roots and you get an infection, then you need a root canal or you know, a tooth extraction. So that happens all the time in my clinic person comes in for neck pain, they have no pain in low back, but now the x-rays of low back, it'll show low back lumbar pelvic subluxations and misalignments, which can be improved with proper adjustments. We see a disc degeneration at the very bottom, L5-S1, sometimes even more discs than just one. Now we can also talk to them about their uh, sitting posture because majority of them are sitting at a computer all the time with their work, either at home 
or at the workplace. So if we can give them workstation ergonomic training, a standing desk solution, we can start doing adjustments. If the disc is bad enough, we can also do therapies in the office like spinal decompression therapy. Now you're really helping the patient long-term, right? Not just the symptom that's currently there, but you're having a whole spine holistic approach. So again, so much value that comes from, from x-rays. And some would debate that x-rays you know, are just done so that you can show the patient their problems, scare them, and you know, convince them into doing more treatment and make more money off them. Yes, there definitely are chiropractors who do that, you know, and that is unethical. You know, that is not the right way to do it, and that those are scare tactics. Uh, and I'm not saying to do that. I, we don't do that in my practice. I don't teach my chiropractic clients uh, for coaching to do that. But what you're doing is you're clinically finding all, all the facts about the patient's spine and sharing with the patient because they really need to know the condition of their whole spine. And then if there's treatment that could benefit them, then present it and offer it, right? And then it's up to the patient if they want to accept your recommendations or not. Just like if you went to a dentist and they said, hey, you have three cavities, ultimately it's your choice. You could say, well, let's take care of one. If one's not that bad, then we wait a little bit and take care of that later. You could do that. But I know most people take care of all their cavities. And our society is just you know, starting to really get up to speed on the importance of uh, spinal health care for the whole spine. But at some point, I think we'll get to a point where if a chiropractor says, hey, you've got all these areas, you really should take care of it now, that the vast majority of the public, like, you know, they accept dental recommendations, will accept chiropractic recommendations, and really take care of everything on their spine that they need to take care of, right? So ultimately, x-rays should not be for financial gain, uh, but it is for clinical excellence, is for really helping the patient to the best of your ability. Um, you know, what's the saying, a uh, picture's worth a, a thousand words or how many words? It, it really... It really does, yeah. And then there's also MRIs. We're not going to get into that. MRIs um, are typically done a smaller percentage of the time when you need to see the disc, the soft tissue material, disc bulging, where exactly nerves are being pinched by nerves or, or bones. And so MRI will show, along with x-rays, now a very complete picture, okay? Uh, but x-rays definitely, I think, should be standard in chiropractic care. And at some point, I think we... May I get to that point? It is not the case now. I also do sadly hear that most of the chiropractic schools really do not um, teach that this is that important, that you should only do it uh, when it's really, in their opinion, really, really needed. Um, and I'm not sure what that criteria is nowadays being taught in schools. I know when I went to school, again, that was the approach that you don't x-ray every single patient, only certain small, um, small number of cases. But when you hit the real world, you realize just how important, how beneficial it really is to take x-rays on all your patients, okay? So I hope that gives you some insights. If you've been taking x-rays, great job, keep it up. If you're not taking a full spine x-ray approach, I highly recommend that. Don't just do regionals. If you're not taking x-rays, really take this information and think about it, right? List the pros and cons. Talk to some other doctors who take x-rays and, and see what they think. Um, you know, if, it, if it's a financial investment concern, I would say this is one of those things where this is probably one of the best investments you can take for your practice is to have an on-site x-ray unit. And the process to become licensed or certified, I know every state is different, but if there is um, an additional licensing test that you need to do to be able to take x-rays, uh, that process, honestly, is just typically some studying and a test and a fee. And now you're um, able to take x-rays. So highly, highly um, recommend going through that process so that you can have x-rays available to your patients on a daily basis. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll be back with more topics in chiropractic business and overall business strategies in general. But for the chiropractors that have tuned into this one, I hope that this really uh, shed some light on the whole debate of should I x-ray or not x-ray new patients? And the answer from my humble professional opinion is 
Yes, absolutely yes, except for those small percentage of contraindicated um, cases, okay? Dr. John Lee with Alpha Omega Consulting, and this has been another episode of the Alpha Omega Biz Dev Podcast. See you next time.